What's happening, everybody? We got a super cool, super tight experimental show for you today. I mean, look at all this action. This is the Glass Academy. This is the experimental show. You got myself, Jacob Nordine, Joey Walker working with us. Uh, we got Michelle on the camera. Family business out of Dearborn, Michigan, and we're making some pretty nice stuff today. So check out the drawing. When it gets intense, when we have to think about the process, always important and very helpful for everybody, for you guys, for the assistant, for me, to think through my brain, to make a nice drawing of what's going on. Gives an opportunity for Joey to hop in. He's like, what's this? What do you think about that? And then we queued it up and decided what we were doing. Now, Joey, and you know, we're skipping around a little bit. The beginning of this video, uh, we wanted to get right into the action, but Joey worked on, you're gonna see in a second, making a sphere. Here's a little bit of color we're pulling out. Um, and this is a multi-process video here. There's probably like a million different parts to it, but we're gonna piece it together. This is goblet making, this is Venetian style. This is not, the only experimental thing about this is the fact that we went so large and in charge and this right here. This is something Joey has. He's, he was sponsored for a while by a brand new uh, glass color producing company and they wanted him to take a shot at, take a stab at using their glow in the dark color. So what we did here, and this was Joey's idea, was to make a sweet glow in the dark marble in the center of this giant uh, chalice, vase, goblet, crazy son of a gun piece. So what he did here, and he knows after using this uh, color before, that you have to encase it. So what he's gonna do, instead of like, instead of trying to drip it onto hot glass, it doesn't stick very well. He blew out this bubble, and I helped him torch the end of this, and he blew out the bottom of it so that we had a hollow tube. minute you're gonna see us fill the tube up with the glow powder this is literally glow-in-the-dark material where it's hot I mean I'm sorry when it's uh, sunny out it charges when you get in the dark it glows so we're gonna see that process go on right about now super interesting material I got a spoon in my hand Joey made the wise move to seal up this connection right here. If that had a hole still in it, we'd pour it in there and it would just fall all the way to the pipe and we would be puffing on some glow in the dark, probably toxic material. But here we go. Takes a slight, slight, slight hand situation. That's what you call it. Oh, there goes a little bit. We're just feeding the glass a little bit of glow in the dark powder and we're gonna see what happens. You see a little bit sticking on the bottom but there's really not that much sticking. So Joey's gonna go into the hole with an upward angle, letting that glass fall back into it. And then we took the squish town. There's some beautiful, nice graphics popping up, you guys, and a reminder for me to mention we're a small business out of Dearborn, Michigan. We love what we do, and we want you guys to watch with us more. So if you guys are brand new to the show, like and subscribe. Put a comment down there. Look at that, that didn't even stick. We weren't hot enough. Put a comment down there if you're new to the show. Ask us a question, we'll get back to you. Uh, let us know what you like seeing. This is the experimental show, one of about three or four different things that we do here. Uh, but look at this, it's a beautiful looking piece actually. And he's picking up some dichroic glass. This is. We call it extra sparkle bling bling glass, but it's a coated material that has this super metallic and sparkly property. So we've got pretty much a crazy color experimental sandwich of action going on. Now here we are skipping to Michelle's video for a little sneak peek into what she was working on. A little spiral action with Oliver, a little bit of uh, color combination action. But that's our sandwich there now uh, getting pushed together. We added a little clear on either side to encase the uh, super sparkle bling bling glass because if you heat that up too much, it'll overcook and it'll burn off that metallic property. So 
Joey's slowly finessing this all back together, we're gonna switch the axis as well by punting it up and working on the opposite side. Squishes it on there, he's gonna cut it off. I'm gonna walk away with that and then it's on Joey here for a minute to get that super hot again and start sphericizing it into one beautiful spherical situation. Here he goes. Oh, he did give it a real nice swirl too here. You guys will get a good look at this uh, when this piece is all finished up. Super crazy action. But also in chopping out about half of what was done here, still a long process. A little more of Michelle's action going on here. Extra trail, a bunch of different colors. So here we are dipping back into the furnace. There's all our hashtags and handles, folks. Just give us a follow. We really do our best to try and post different content on each different platform. So it's worth checking us out on each of those platforms. Weekly updates and action. showing you my hand there because I almost just rolled that on the marver and just the natural dust of the shop will eventually fall on the marver and pick it up and uh, maybe I think there was someone else doing something over there that day that was really causing it to be dusty but with the clear glass I gave it one good wipe. Ooh, there was a lot of action. Joey's coming in with the black pow pow here. This is powdered glass. This is the stuff you don't want to breathe but if you tenderly lay it down on the table and roll it out like it's some flour for your pizza dough, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get an air bubble in here. I'm gonna hit that mold to the left, 12 points. Here we go, right into the mold. I'm gonna give it a little extra heat to get the outside hot again and watch this uh, tender application. You can start on the left, go one time across and then go up and hit the top of it. We wanted color just on the ribs, not in the crevices, not in the valleys just on the ribs. And now we're getting into Goblet Town. So Joey's gonna start blowing it out. This is the foot of the glass that we're starting with. So I'm gonna pull out the tip and it's a beautiful trumpet foot. This is something I've really enjoyed making here. Made a couple trophies in the past few weeks uh, for various different tournaments and to have a beautiful long fluted uh, trumpet foot is a gorgeous thing. The trick with these trumpet feet though is that normally you make a foot of a glass, normally you make the cup first put the foot on it and then put a pipe onto the foot and break it off and open up the other side. Instead, we're gonna do that same move here right now and flip it around, but we don't have a cup top on there. Normally you'd have the whole top finished up here and we gotta do this in three different parts. So we're gonna make what's called the avolio right here, this nice beautiful spool. We're gonna punny it up, flip it around, open up that flared trumpet foot and then put it into the garage. We're gonna put it away safe and sound for about 20 minutes later, and we'll keep it at 1,000 degrees so that it doesn't crack, it doesn't break, but it's not hot enough either that it's gonna slump or move at all. A Little bit of water, a little light tap, boom, pops right off. So we got it flipped around, I got it hot. I'm gonna start plucking and trimming it. We got a lip wrap queued up, black, to match the uh, black ribs. And you see the beautiful connection on that avolio on the bottom. It's nice and tall here. Once we cut that extra thick glass off and make it nice and even, we'll lay the lip wrap on there and then we're gonna open it up into that trumpet shape. Really satisfying move here. Nice and juicy. Here we are opening it up. Took a couple different heats. I wanted to toy with the shape of it a little bit and see what was best. We ended up leaving it real tall and tasty. Kinda just like the picture. It's a really nice thing when you can make what you've drawn. That's the sign of a talented artist. But the reality is sometimes you get to where you've drawn and you're like, you know what? Maybe I gotta do that a little different angle or maybe I gotta switch that up. It's just not feeling right. The proportions aren't right. But I was loving the way this looked. So we knock this off. Joey takes it away with a nice hot fork, thousand degree fork into the thousand degree garage. He's got his marble already in there, staying nice and warm. He's probably gonna flip it in a second so it doesn't slump. The garage changes temperature about 200 degrees to the right and to the left. So you put it on the right, it's gonna stay completely solid and not crack, but before we go to attach it back to the piece, you've gotta move it back over to the left about a foot so that it gets that heat built back up into the piece.
Now we're working on the top. Very similar process here. Gonna get the bubble in there. Joey already smoothed out that black frit, that black pow pow. So I'm gonna pop a bubble in there, get it shaped up for the mold, the identical same mold so that everything's looking the same. 12 rib optic mold. Not for making finished products, just for putting optics in the glass and helping with color pattern. This is where the proportions matter and making mugs, making drinkware, making functional stuff that people can recognize. Proportions are super important and working your proportions and working your heat are what glass blowing is all about. So I was really focused at this point, thinking about my size, thinking about the shape. I let it squat up a little bit so it's gonna be a low bowl. And here comes the bolio number two. Real hot glass, got my favorite pair of diamond shears. It cuts super smooth. We do a little pat pat, a little psh, and then right on time, Joey's gonna be back with the paddle to help me out. It's a two person job doing this avolio move. It takes a steady hand from both people, linked up, synchronized. It's a brand new paddle, so it's really burning up good. Normally, when you get a layer of carbon on there, it's, smooth, it's a little bit smoother, so it was honestly a little tough working with that on the goblets here. Wouldn't have preferred that, but it's what we had at the bench at the time. And it's how we do it. So here we're gonna break it off. Maybe you can start to see how this is coming together. This is gonna be the top of the glass. What we just made was the bottom and we got the ball. We're gonna have to stick all those together hot at one time and get it away. And before we do that, we gotta do... One of the trickier moves, in my opinion, in glass blowing, we'll open this up and we're gonna put a punty. We're gonna put another rod inside the glass and stick it to the very bottom inside of the goblet top. Multiple reasons why that's tricky. The first one is it switches the axis so that when you stop turning the pipe and the glass is moving, the high side comes down. Now hold on, how do I even explain this? That's how difficult this is in my brain. There we are, letting it get squatty. It's opposite, so right now, if I stop turning the pipe, that whole glass would droop to the ground. If it was opposite that, if I stopped turning the pipe, the glass would do something else. <laughs> I can't even tell you because I just did it today. I just made another trophy today and it was blowing my mind. Somehow I got it perfectly straight, but all I can tell you is that when you flip it around and you got a punty on the inside, your point of movement is inside the product. The more weight you add to it, the longer it gets. Every time you switch the length of it, the way it bends is different. And maybe it's going to take another 10 years to be able to verbalize all that action, but maybe hopefully you guys will be able to see it here in a second. I mean, goodness. But look at that beautiful bowl right there. It's looking nice. Black on black, here comes Joey with a dirty punty. That means he rolled the outside in a non-stickable fire brick material so we could stick it in there. And all we're gonna be able to do, this is the second hardest thing about punting on the inside of a glass, is all we can do is tap the pipe. If we try and get cold metal on that interior connection or we try and get some water on that interior connection, it will most definitely crack the thin wall of that cup. It's not like on the bottom of a mug or a glass that we got a big foot on. It's fragile, temperature-wise and uh, physically. So we're on the inside now, and this is where things get hairy. They either go good or they don't go good. This is kind of technically where it becomes an experimental show. Joey's reheating that up from about 950, 1000 degrees, making sure it doesn't crack, and there actually was a little crack in that because it's such a solid piece of glass. I was able to seal that up a little bit later, you guys will see, but I was torching my side here, also torching the tweezers, getting things hot, getting things ready to go, because Joey in one second here is going to bring that over, we'll stick it to the bottom, and we're gonna knock it off. The third thing about punting up on the inside is that your thinnest part of the glass, the lip of the glass, is the last thing to go into the reheating chamber and the first thing to come out. So the importance of that means that you need to get everything extra hot and you need to make sure that that lip is warm enough and by you doing that, getting that lip warm enough so that it cracks, you're heating up the pipe further, you gotta hold further back and you're heating up the rest of the piece probably more than you need to. So you really gotta watch and you'll see me just like I was there using the paddle to keep things straight right there multiple times because I'm just trying to keep it hot enough that it doesn't crack on me in that moment. Here comes round number two. He said, let's run it, Joey. I'm torching the bottom of it. I torched the tweezers. Look, a little bit of action. This is nail biting. 
grab it, stick it. It was hot enough, and look how straight it stuck on the first try. That's just a blessing. It's the worst when you spend that much time on a piece. You stick it on, and it's like, I don't know, a centimeter off, whatever it may be, but you can visually see the moving of it, and it's just a horrible, treacherous thing. This thing was right on center, barely had to touch it. I don't even think I did, and look at that. Super satisfying. The trophy I made today, we were at this point. I sat down on the bench one last time and it fell off. And this trophy was almost twice as big as this. It was ridiculous. We spent an hour and a half on it. But that's where the confidence came from, making this piece right here. Joey kills it as an assistant. There's our drawing. We're going to see if it comes off real nice here. Joey's got some nice hot forks again. He's going to grab it from underneath. A little security here by the paddle. All I could do is tap the pipe and it broke where it needed to break. Steady hand Joey into the box. Thousand degrees in the annealing oven. You just want to lift it up one more time. But that's how that turned out, folks. I mean, that was just a really fun one. That was a fun experimental show. There's the final product for you. Uh, beautiful piece, glows in the dark, black and clear. This piece is going to be made available to the VIPs first. If you're a subscriber to our YouTube channel, you can take a look at that. We'll keep you updated. If you're not a subscriber, take a look at our uh, options for you on YouTube. If anything, like and share the feed, you guys. Subscribe to us and spread the word. We're from Dearborn, Michigan. We appreciate you. Family run business, and we're going to keep making art here and tomorrow and the day after and so on, folks. Have a beautiful one. We'll talk with you soon. Check us out Tuesday night live 6 to 8 on Facebook and the YT.